Welcome to today's episode of The Only Thing That Matters, getting your startup to product market fit here on Chicago Founders TV. Why do we call it The Only Thing That Matters? Because when product market fit was first popularized as a term by Mark Andreessen, he titled his blog post The Only Thing That Matters, explaining that if you don't get your startup to product market fit, it's dead. We bring you clips from our Founder Stories interviews with Hall of Fame level entrepreneurs providing the insights and expertise that allowed them to achieve product market fit, so you can too. Today's episode features Brian Johnson, the founder of Braintree, which sold to PayPal for nearly a billion dollars. And if you're a developer, you know Braintree well. It's essentially PayPal 2.0. Brian's another of those very interesting and different founding stories that fueled product market fit. In his founder story interview, Brian shared how before founding Braintree, he was selling credit card processing to small businesses. And how the insights from that job really allowed Braintree to nail product market fit. Check it out. Okay, so t talk a little bit, when did you found it? When, when the, how did the initial idea come about? Um, yes, it, it's a long story, but the, the short version is that I was broke. And um, <laughs> as I guess a lot of you can relate with. <laughs> um, I was pursuing another company that I'd started, and we were two years in uh, without any money. And it wasn't a clear horizon of making money. And so uh, desperate, uh, married and with a child, I emailed the 50 richest people in where I was living, Utah, and I asked them if I could you know, come work for them as their sidekick. I told them I was young and smart and ambitious and I could just do whatever they wanted me to. Because um, I needed some flexibility to work on my other uh, business and no one responded. <laughs> You'll be I, one I, of those 50 people soon enough, so you <laughs> remember when someone writes you. Uh, I then applied to you know, 20 or 30 jobs. Uh, no one was interested in talking to me, and so I couldn't find a job. And uh, so I took the only thing I could find, which was a 100% commission door-to-door -door sales job, you know, peddling credit card processing. Wow. And it was really painful. Uh, you know, going into the door, right when I walked in, you know, the owners would typically say, like, oh, you're the fourth guy today that's come in here to try to sell me something. What do you have? And I'd say, well, you know, credit card processing, it'd be even worse. Like, oh, every guy that comes in here, you know, takes advantage of me as this on so. What's the closing rate on credit card processing or even door opening rate must be tough. Yeah, it was terrible. Um, but what I did figure out is that um, the, the credit card processing industry is this unregulated space. There's no requirements to get in the game. There's no one overseeing the, the industry. And so you had all these unscrupulous providers. It's, and it's also very complex. So people could take, take advantage of, of business owners. And uh, what I figured out is that if I could package honesty, transparency, and good customer support, that sold. And so my pitch was, I'd say, if you give me five minutes of your time, I guarantee you I'll win your business. And oftentimes it was intriguing for them to hear, like, hey, what's this guy going to offer me, right? That would be so convincing that I would say, sure, right? I would switch again. And I'd open my pitch book and I'd walk them through um, from A to Z how the industry worked, who the providers were, what they did, what they did differently. And I was just honest. And I told them how it was. We didn't really have any secret sauce as a company. It was, we had the same products everyone else did. And, and um, was this a software company or more of a service so provider? More of a, a provider, like a network, like a Verizon or AT&T. And, um, but despite that, people bought it because it was a unique pitch. And I became the company's number one salesperson. I broke all their sales records in the first part 12 months. Part-time. Uh, they had 400 nationwide. And it's just this formula of honesty, transparency, and good support. And uh, it resonated with people. And so I, I started Braintree based upon that principle of doing the same thing in the online world that I was doing in the uh, card present world. And, and you know, one of the things you see people who come out of um, industries is sometimes the company starts with more of a sales and marketing element than a tech yeah. element. Well, do you guys start with tech dominant or more sales and marketing dominant? It was more sales and marketing. I had, uh, I had learned on the streets how to do it. And then we, um, fortunately, we were introduced to OpenTable. And they had this problem where they had 11,000. How would you, you connect with OpenTable? I met uh, Chuck Templeton. Oh, Chuck Templeton. Yeah, the last tech month's event. founder stories. What a small world. Yeah. Chuck, Chuck is in every company. I think I'll have to yeah. Chuck be the Nexus. He is the Kevin Bacon of the Chicago startup scene. <laughs> uh, he does great stuff, though, much better than Kevin Bacon. Yeah, he was an advisor to the company for the first two years. He's a great guy. Um, Terrific. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed working with him. And he introduced us to OpenTable. And OpenTable had this problem where they had 11,000 restaurants around the, the world. And they stored credit card data for reservations for restaurants. But they, if they did that, they had to comply with the industry standards of PCI. And it was just massively complex problem they didn't want to deal with. And so they asked us if we could solve it. 
And of course, like any good startup would say, we said, of course we can solve that. <laughs> uh, so they, they, uh, did a, they gave us a $1.2 million contract, $90,000 up front, and we developed uh, software for them. Yeah, so overnight, right, we had all this money flowing through the company. And what was it, your revenue like before you got the contract? Oh, I think it was, don't tell OpenTable this. <laughs> I, I think it was somewhere around 15, 20,000 a month, I think in that ballpark. Wow, wow. And so, uh, was that a moment that your was that the moment your business model pivoted from sales and marketing? It was, yeah, and I think it's true that in, in um, everyone's life, entrepreneurship or not, that we we have these moments of opportunity and of luck, and uh, that was a big one for us. It was a turning point at Braintree, a turning point in my life personally, and we were, we were in the right place at the right time, and we just were very fortunate, and it changed the trajectory of Braintree. 